Okay, let's get started for the last session of, uh, of this Tech Days. I want to look at building real-time real applications using WebSockets on, uh, well, using, uh, building web applications using WebSockets. So again, I'm Peter Himschot, I work for UTU, uh, which is a training company based in Brussels. Uh, we specialize in .NET training, SharePoint, SQL Server, BI, uh, and also web development like HTML5, MVC, and so on. So, what we're going to look at is first the concept of real-time communication. What does it mean? Uh, and then we're going to dig down into WebSockets. To be honest, for this session, I only have a couple of slides, and then I have lots of demo. And probably in the, just like previously, I'll be done a little bit quicker. I know it's the last session of today, so I think everybody wants to go home. Huh? So, what's the whole idea of WebSockets? Well, if you want to build an application that uses real-time communication on the web, it can be really cool if you have something like that. Huh? Just imagine Twitter. Huh? Well, I've seen a bunch of tweets, uh, tweets for, for Tech Days. Huh? or you want to build something like, well, Facebook or anything else. Uh, if you need real-time communication, it's kind of hard. Why is it hard? Well, because the HTTP protocol really does not lend itself for real-time communication. First of all, you have all the overhead of the calls. Uh, you have all the HTTP overhead. But also, it's a connection-less protocol. So normally it's the client who initiates contact and then the server responds. So some guy uh, called Ian Hickson decided to, well, let's figure it out if we can do this better. Uh, he's actually a big train enthusiast. So he wanted to have his model trains and he wanted to be able to steer them from anywhere in the world using a browser. So he came up with the idea of having a kind of socket mechanism, but over HTTP. Uh, now, how would you do real-time communication without these sockets? Well, the typical way that this is done is by polling. So the client actually goes back to the server. Do you have something for me? Do you have something for me? Do you have something for me? And of course, most of the time, the answer is going to be, no, I don't have anything for you. This polling, uh, sorry, this, yeah, this polling can actually be very bad for your network. Huh? It's going to give you a lot of overhead on the network for doing actually nothing. So people started doing things like long polling. In long polling, the server, when it receives a request, it, it's not going to respond immediately. It just waits a certain amount of time. And then if it has something, it sends that back, or it just sends later, sorry, I don't have anything for you. So by keeping that connection open way longer, we can get more efficient communication, but it is still a fake way of doing things. Yeah. So what we really want is a real TCP socket, and that's what WebSockets is all about. WebSockets is really in which you are going to get a TCP socket, that allows you to communicate over the internet. And it is actually initiated using an HTTP protocol and then gets promoted into a TCP protocol. Now, I'm not going to talk about those de details. I really want to talk about what we're going to get. So once we get a WebSocket open, we're going to get a bidirectional TCP socket, which allows us to send tiny messages in a very efficient way back and forth. Uh, it actually works in and out of the browser. You can do this today with all kinds of technologies. Who attended the Signal R session? Uh, so I know Martin Barrio told you don't use WebSockets yet, and that's kind of also my message, but if you can limit yourself to a certain number of platforms, you can already use WebSockets. Uh, um, okay, so it's kind of ideal if you want to have tiny packets travel over the wire in a very efficient way, and I'm going to show you, the programming model itself is really easy. Okay. So, what do I need to do to have WebSockets? Well, of course, we'll have to have an implementation on the server. On the server, I have several options. I could use 
for example, an HTTP handler, and that's what I'm going to do. I could also use Windows Communication Foundation, but all of these mechanisms behind, behind your back are using the same socket mechanism. Actually, if you want to do this, you're, be, uh, you're best using things like IES 8. So I'm running this on Windows 8 because there I have IES 8, and IES 8 has out-of-the-box WebSocket support. I still need to hook into that mechanism. And the best way to do that is by adding an HTTP handler. That HTTP handler is going to check if you're sending WebSocket messages, and then when it gets a WebSocket message, it's going to hand it off to a socket handler, and that socket handler is then going to do whatever is necessary to make it work. By the way, uh, the client, again, is going to initiate that contact, so the server is just going to wait for somebody. Uh, it's going to create a socket receiver, and that socket receiver is then used to communicate with that specific client. So what do I need to do to have that HTTP handler? Well, it's easy. An HTTP handler is something you've probably already used in ASP.NET. Uh, the only thing we need to do here is to actually check in the request, in the process request, if you're actually getting a WebSocket request. So for this, there's an extension method, is WebSocket request. And then if that is so, I'm actually going to give that to a socket receiver. In a moment, I'm going to show you the live code. Uh, we can walk through that. But basically, that's what it comes down to. Uh, you create an HB handler, you wait for a socket request, and then you create a new object, and you use that object for handling all the requests. In this case, I'm using a gamer object. And actually, in that socket receiver, I only need to do one thing. When I'm receiving a message, uh, when, I'm created, uh, when I'm creating that new socket receiver, uh, which is a, a merit, uh, I'm going to enter an endless loop, and in that loop, I'm going to wait for some message to be received. Now, these messages are always simple strings. So I'm going to receive a message like that. I will have to convert it into something I can use. And since the web only knows JSON, what we're going to do on the server side is we're going to take that message and turn it into a JSON object. And then from there on, we can decide what to do with it. But again, that JSON message could be anything. So there's no support for, th for that there. Huh? Of course, you can always build your own extension library on top of something like this, but sockets is just about sending strings. By the way, if you want to send messages, again, the same concept. Huh? You're going to take whatever you want to send, you're going to turn it into a string. Preferably, if it's a .NET object, you're going to turn it into a JSON string, and then you can just send that out. Now, again, you see that all these APIs these days are completely asynchronous. So both having the socket receiver, uh, it's an async method, and sending that is also an async method. But generally, it's fairly simple uh, the way you call that. So let's have a look at the, uh, the thing I built. So what I have here is the same HB handler. Uh, so I'm just installing this. I've installed that into web.config, so ASP.NET is going to load it. And then each time I get a request, you'll see this method getting called. And then if it's a WebSocket request, I'm creating a new player. Um, you might say, huh? If that client then talks again, are we going to get through this thing again? No, no, no. Uh, once you get a WebSocket request, you have to see this as, I would like to have a WebSocket, please, so I need to return that WebSocket, and that's this socket receiver. So we have to do it this way. Okay, by the way, um, if I then drill down, oops, into this colder, uh, what you're going to see is I'm going to have uh, my socket receiver. Uh, in the socket receiver, by the way, I'm actually keeping track of the current context. Uh, this context is going, to send, uh, is going to be sent to me, and I need to have that in this object as a kind of primitive object to talk back later back to the client. By the way, what I'm doing here is when I receive a socket request, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send the confirmation back to the client. Now, and then I'm going to start waiting for stuff. Now, that waiting uh, is kind of where well, you might say busy waiting, but since this is asynchronous, it's not going to take up any server-side resources. 
If I then get a message which is actually an error message, I'm just going to disconnect. Otherwise, I'm going to take the message I've received, turn it into a string, and then I'm going to parse that string. And the way I did this is using one of the JSON. I, I'm using JSON.NET, which is a library that makes it really easy to work with JSON and turn that back and forth into objects. Now, maybe I need to talk a little bit more about the object I'm actually sending. In that, se in that message, there is always a type property. Okay. So in the message I'm sending, I'm sending a type and then other stuff, and I'm going to use that type to distinguish what is the kind of message. So I'm doing that by creating an anonymous object using this syntax. This is C-sharp code, of course. Uh, and then I'm going to deserialize that into an anonymous type. Then I'm getting the type, and then I'm actually going to deserialize that into a real object. So again, I'm going to take that string, deserialize it into, for example, when a player makes a move, when a player wins, and maybe other messages. So, fairly simple coder, and then, of course, I'm handling that message, whatever that is. Okay. Let's put a breakpoint here. But before I can run this, I first need to have a look at the client side. So what about the client side? Actually, this is where things can get a little bit hairy, because not all browsers these days support WebSockets. For example, Firefox had WebSocket support, and then they dropped it again. Uh, so WebSockets is still kind of a protocol in progress. But if you have WebSocket support, uh, you'll be able to create a WebSocket object on the client. And then again, you can send an receive messages. So to create a WebSocket, this is really easy. Uh, first thing, I uh, remark, this is JavaScript. I know uh, it's almost that you can't, you can't look at the code here and see that it's JavaScript, so I want to emphasize that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just creating a WebSocket object, and the thing is I need to give this a URI. And the URI, instead of being HTTP, I'm using WS or I'm using WSS. Uh, the first one, WS, is where I just want to have a socket without security. If I want to have a secure socket, I can just use WSS. So once I create this object, I can then open up the, the connection. Uh, and what you see then is that the client is going to create a connection, is going to use HTTP to talk back to the server and trying to set up a TCP socket. Now, there is no guarantee. So what I need to do next is I need to start listening on this object if the connection was successful. If that connection is successful, I'm going to, for example, get events like on open. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a method. When the WebSocket gets opened, I'm going to display that I've been connected. Now, the display itself is going to show in the browser that there's a connection going on. And then if I want to receive messages, I'm going to again do that asynchronously. So I'm going to get this message event. So I'm going to register when there's a message. I want you to, well, process the message. Again, I'm going to get a message as a string, and I'm going to turn it into a JavaScript object. And then I'm going to do something with a JavaScript object. Watch out, there's also other events like close and error. What if there's an error halfway? I can handle all of those things. By the way, if I want to send a message again, once I have the WebSocket object, or once I have an open connection, I can easily send messages. Again, I need to send a string. So whatever I have, I just take that, JSON it, uh, I turn it into a JSON string, and I send that over to the server. Again, in my colder, what I have is the JavaScript version. Uh, and this is the four in a brew game again. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new WebSocket object. I'm going to open up a connection, and I'm going to start to listen for that connection. Now, and that's kind of the thing I need to do here. So let's see if, let's run this. So the only thing I want to see now is the server being hit. Uh, so in my game player, a, I should actually see a call to this method. So 
So once I hit this thing, uh, it's going to create the client side object. Uh, and actually, you see here, it has been connected. So actually, my, my JavaScript created the WebSocket. The WebSocket started to talk to the server. And the server sent back, I have a connection. So we have an active connection. I'm wondering why it didn't enter this breakpoint, because I forgot to debug. OK, one more time. Let's just run this. It's going to open up my browser. Yep. Let's hope it's going to work. So if I create this thing, it's going to create a connection. Uh, That's my JavaScript version now. Uh -huh. So I'm getting this. I'm getting my context. Uh, and I'm actually going to leave it running. OK, but I'm not done yet. So what else, what else do I need to do? Well, once I have the connection, I'm going to start to have an active communication between the two. So in this JavaScript, uh, I'm also going to start listening for messages. For example, I want to listen if we get a connection uh, when we get a new game, for example. Now, the idea is this is going to be a multiplayer game. So on the server side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for two players to actually connect. And once these get connected, I'm going to ta ta tell each one, hey, there's another buddy you can play against. So client side, I will actually have to wait on messages. And the way I'm doing this, by the way, let's uncomment this one too. The way I'm doing that is I'm actually going to call this little JavaScript. And there's a funny thing in JavaScript. In JavaScript, an object is a function, and a function is an object. So if you create an object like this, uh, you can give these members. And these members are actually, each object is also a dictionary. So if I want to call a certain method, what I can do here is I can just get a message pass this into JSON, and then from that JSON, I can get the type property, and I can call the method that has the same name as that type. So if I'm going to do this, this statement is kind of going to jump immediately to one of these functions. For example, connect, game on, move, wins. Uh, it's just going to jump there directly. OK. Client side. Uh, so again, when I get a connection, I'm going to create a new object. This object is then going to start listening in an active loop. But it's also going to send a message that we have a real connection. And that's why my client side here, when it receives this connect, it actually remembers what is the current player. Uh, and it's going to wait for two players. OK. Now, behind this, there's a little bit of logic server side to look for another player. And the thing to realize is that's all done in this game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a game uh, when there is no game yet and the player wants to join the game, I'm going to create that game and I'm going to set the first player. Uh, so this is what the lo that's the logic that you see here. So in this join, uh, when I'm having a current game, I'm going to look for a game. And if there is no game, I'm going to create a new game, uh, uh, which is this caller. Otherwise, if I already have a game, I'm going to make this player join that other game. Now, if I'm going to jump into this, uh, you're going to see that I'm actually going to send a message that the game has been started. So again, at the client side, I'm going to get into here. I'm going to get this game on. I'm going to get this message. Uh, and then we're actually going to make the players allow them to play to against one another. OK. Um, by the way, to make things work nicer, I need to change this. This was the display, which would show you whose, whose move it was. But this one is actually going to remember what is the current player and is going to tell people who can, uh, who's going to be able to play. So the display move does that. 
And then lower down, uh, I need to implement this thing. So what's the idea here? Whenever a player makes a move, I'm going to send the server that the player has moved. The server is going to receive that move message, which is actually down here. And then when that happens, it's going to notify the other player that the first player moved to a certain position. So again, if I go to this method, huh, the, the moves, it's actually a delegate, it's, a, it's an event, and I'm going to connect here, a little bit lower down. Um, let me have a look for that piece of code. Where did I leave that? Okay, you know what? Uh, so this is where I call that moves, and where am I registering for that? Uh, higher up. Okay. Mm. Now, thing to note, I'm actually keeping track uh, of all these things on the server. So the server will actually know who to call, uh, who are the two different players in the game. And again, that's going to be in this game object. Uh, so the game object actually has a collection of available games. And then when one player moves, uh, uh, I'm registering for that. Come on, where is that? Uh, yeah, so I can't. I'll, I'll walk through that when we when we go when we do debugging. Okay. So um, let's put a breakpoint here so I can show you the progress. I want to make sure that this rebuilds to clear whatever is still left. And I'm going to run. So again, I'm going to create a new game. So what this thing does, it ends up, talks to the server. On the server, I'm looking for a current game. There shouldn't be any game, so I'm going to create a new game. Uh, I'm going to start listening for a game over. I'm then going to join whoever the player is to this game. So on the server, I have kind of collections of two players uh, in a list. Actually, this joining uh, is actually going to remember who's player one and who's player two. So here I'm assigning the different players, and I'm also registering here for the move method uh, and the disconnect. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay, all of this stuff can be concurrently done, so I need to make sure that I do this properly. Yeah. And then I'm going to start listening again on the server here for any requests. So now I have one player who's been connected. Now let's take another browser that also talks web sockets. I could have used Google Chrome for this one, it would work the same way. Come on, don't crash on me. Ah, probably in the breakpoint still, run. Is this one? Ah, okay. So if I step into this, this again is creating a socket. It's going to talk to the server. The server is going to create for me a new game. I'm going to join that game and don't need this breakpoint anymore. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to join this current game and this one is, again, going to remember who the player is. And I'm now sending both the browsers that we're in a, in a game. Okay, so I'm sending it to the other browser here. There's a game on. And then again, I enter this endless loop. So both of these are now talk, talking to one another. Uh, here, I'm player one, so I'm saying make your move. And I forgot to comment something. This is a, a remainder from a previous game, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. And then this player is waiting for this one. So when, when I make my move, uh, I'm sending to the server a message, and then this one is receiving that message. So I can now make a move here too. So I'm just sending messages back and forth. Uh, each one of these is talking to the server, and the server knows where the other client is. 
Okay. Um, actually, just want to make sure that I'm getting rid of this thing. Ah. So. Ah. As you can see, there's not a lot of work you need to do when you want to use WebSockets. Uh, it's available as a very simple API. On the server side, you do have to, you have to do three easy steps. Uh, you have to implement an HTTP handler. You have to implement a socket receiver. And again, don't forget, this is a, for each kind of client connection, you're going to have a server object type socket receiver, which is implemented as a method here. Uh, and then if you want to send messages on the socket receiver, you have that context, and you can just use that context to send messages. Whoops. You can use that context to send messages uh, between to whoever is at the other side. So you do not have to worry about uh, all the sockets. By the way, there's a couple of other things I want to show you here. If I just run this again. WebSockets will automatically let me know when one site, uh, so when, when, uh, oh, when I go to the, come on. When I go to that game, when I create a new game here, it tells me that I've been connected. When I create this one, it automatically sets up, but what if, what if I go away here? This will automatically send a message back to this side that has been disconnected. So all of that is handled for you. There's, a, there's a, no work, there's no special work you have to do here. Well, I'm kind of lying a little bit because on the client side, I did do one thing. If I go here to uh, my WebSockets, what I told it to is let me know when we get enclosed. So whenever one side closes a connection, the other side also gets closed here, uh, and I'm then just going to display that I've been disconnected. Okay, now, I've been implementing the server side using ASP.NET, huh? so my Windows 8 is going to make WebSockets part of the operating system, sorry, part of IES, so part of the operating system. What if you cannot use Windows for that? Uh, of course, there are other implementations out there that implement WebSockets. You've seen Signal R, but Signal R is it's actually a library, an open source library built on top of ASP.NET that actually does either it uses WebSockets or either it uses long polling. So if you're using a browser that does not have support for WebSockets, it will be using long polling. So that's kind of, well, kind of the best way of doing WebSockets currently, but it does add some overhead. If you want, you can also implement WebSockets, for example, using uh, Node.js. Anybody he hear about Node.js? It's kind of, uh, well, kind of strange when, when, you, when you see that, but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. What made .NET so popular? Why does everybody love .NET? Because, come on, you learn a language like C Sharp, you learn the .NET runtime, and you can use it client-side, and you can use it server-side, right? One language. If you want to do web development and you use ASP.NET, you use .NET server-side and you use JavaScript client-side. It's kind of two, two different worlds. So some people were saying, hey, wouldn't it be nice to have a server that we can program with JavaScript? Now, if you hate JavaScript, you're going to think that's a bad idea, of course. Uh, okay, who hates JavaScript? Uh, so, but I hope with this, with this fairly simple demo uh, that JavaScript site, uh, the client site in JavaScript is almost nothing. It's creating the WebSocket object. It's listening to these events, and this is the most important event. And in that event, you take your message, you turn it into a JSON object, and you just handle that JSON object. So technically, this is all fairly simple. Most of the work I, I had to do here was handling the game itself, not handling the WebSockets. And if I go server-side, same idea. 
Uh, on server side, probably the, the, the hardest thing to do, in the beginning for me anyway, was learning to handle these Java, these JSON objects correctly. So again, this is quite easy. You just turn it into an anonymous object, and then you just test for whatever the message is, and however you want to do that, and then you just handle that message. And if you want to send messages, easy. Want to receive messages, the, the WebSocket receiver does that for you. Okay, so what was I talking about? I was talking about Node.js. Well, it allows you to have JavaScript server-side. Hmm. I'm not sure where that is going to go. If you've seen the Azure uh, story, they have Node.js running in the cloud on Azure. So Microsoft is also doing some active work there. Uh, and then you can implement WebSockets that way. OK? Uh, I, I know I'm done really quick, but I know it's the latest session for the l last day. So uh, I'm going to send you home early. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, are there any questions? Are you sharing your code base? You want to have my demo? Sure. Yes. Or you just want to play a game of. <laughs> you don't have to drink a beer whenever you. You don't have to drink a beer whenever you make a move. It can make it more interesting, but it's not good for your liver. Uh, anybody who's thinking that I'm an alcoholic, I'm not. Anybody who has ever seen me drunk, uh, nobody has ever seen me drunk. Well, I'm either very good at hiding it. But I just enjoy a beer from time to time, but I don't, I'm not an alcoholic. So thank you.